We're going to mix it up a little bit here, do some readings and uh, some songs that are supposed to. To begin, I'd like to read a couple hymns from the sacred hymn of the naked sunfish. How could I forget these? I haven't put them on a chain yet, but the day's coming. Hmm, number 17. I've never heard someone say, today is the first day of the rest of your life at a funeral. Apparently, my optimistic friends know when to keep their mouths shut. Hmm, number 18. It said, nothing lasts forever. But if forever is not forever, what is it? Hmm, number 19. Perhaps Nietzsche strode to the precipice, peered into the abyss, and saw a landfill. Odds are good. Hmm, number two. To a newborn babe, three days ago must seem like a lifetime. And now the nonfiction theater of the truly mundane proudly presents Overdue Notes. The scene, a street corner in the poor, disheveled section of a medium-sized American city. As the curtain rises, a 21-year-old Rick is seen right in the scene stage right in the driver's seat of a large, older American car facing the audience. The year is 1973, as reflected in Rick's attire. Bell-bottom pants, tie-dyed shirt, black Converse high tops. His hair is very long and parted in the middle. He is wearing wire-rimmed glasses. On the car's seat next to him is a small pile of books. Stage left, standing on the corner, is a small group of provocatively, provocatively dressed women. Mini skirts with all the trappings of 1970s fashion decadence. It is a beautiful spring afternoon. The women laugh and carry on. Rick, pretending to bring the car to a stop at the intersection. Shit, I think I'm lost, to no one in particular. One of the women, woman number one, sees him and strolls suggestively across the street to the car. She is wearing a very short black leather miniskirt, matching leather jacket, and thigh-high spiked high-heeled boots. It takes some time for Rick to notice her. She approaches on the side of his bad eye. But when he does, he struggles to contain his composure. The woman smiles confidently, leans onto the car door, and sticks her head in the window close to Rick's face. Woman number one, sedu seductively in a whispered tone. Hi there, baby. Want to go out with me? She winks at him. Rick was visibly shaken. Uh, well, ordinarily I'd really like that, but uh, uh, I got to go to the... The, the, the library. <laughs> Upon hearing this, she steps back from the car and puts her hands on her hips with an air of disgust. Woman, say what? Her companions on the street corner laugh and snicker and point at Rick's car. Rick, I'm really sorry, but you see, pointing at the pile of books next to him, they're, they're overdue. <laughs> Curtain. Hmm, number seven. Young people might want to consider that old folks really aren't forgetful. They merely have too much to remember. Hmm, number eight. To teenagers, reminiscing means mulling over the events of three weeks ago. Hmm, number 19. I realize that it takes all kinds, but does there have to be so many of that kind? Mm, number 16. Virginity is overrated. Then again, so is losing it. I'd like to do an old John Prine tune for you. Thank you. 
left us alone. John and Linda live in Omaha. Joe is somewhere on the road. We lost a baby in the Iraqi war. I still don't know what for. It don't matter anymore. Dane proudly presents Senior Excursion. Act One, Scene, a small, almost filled minivan, minibus with nine senior citizens mostly sitting towards the back of the vehicle. Driving is a young woman with Rick sitting directly behind her, riding along to learn how to be a backup driver. It is a bright, brisk, sunny February day, late morning. Driver. I don't know who ordered this beautiful day, but thank you. The sun is wonderful. Senior lady number one from the middle of the bus. It's going to rain tomorrow. Senior lady number two from the very back of the bus. And it's going to snow Thursday. A guy named Bob. Where are we going after lunch? <laughs> Driver. Shopping at a couple of used clothing stores. Won't that be fun, Bob? A guy named Bob. I don't need nothing. I got all I need. I don't need nothing. Rip. You never know, Bob. A guy named Bob. Everything. Got it. Driver. Don't forget daylight savings time is coming up real soon. March 8th, I think. Senior lady number three. I don't understand what daylight savings time is for. Senior lady number two. 
More light at the end of the day, they say. Senior lady number four. What does anybody need light at night for? <laughs> Mornings when I do stuff, night is supposed to be dark. <laughs> Senior ladies one, three, five, six, and seven. Yeah, in the morning. <laughs> Senior lady number four. And what about the kids standing around in the, in the dark? I never went to school when it was dark. A guy named Bob. Me either. Went to school when it was light. Came home from school when it was light. <laughs> Senior lady number seven. And what about the farmers? Senior lady number five. And what about the animals? A guy named Bob. Animals don't care. They don't care much about anything. <laughs> Curtain. Act two. Scene. The parking lot of a local restaurant. Rick and a guy named Bob are standing waiting for the driver to come out and open up the bus doors. The rest of the group slowly drifts out of the restaurant. The sun is still shining brightly. A guy named Bob. What's your name again? Rick. It's Rick. A guy named Bob. Do you have any of that pie in there? Pointing to the restaurant behind him. Rick. No, but it looked delicious. A guy named Bob. Know how much a piece of pie was in there? Pointing back to the restaurant again. Rick. No. A guy named Bob. Two ninety-five a slice. Rick, is that a lot? A guy named Bob looks at Rick incredulously while senior lady four walks up to him. Senior lady number four. Hey Bob, did you have some pie? It was delicious. A guy named Bob. How much did you pay for a piece of that pie? Senior lady number four. I don't recall. A guy named Bob. Two ninety-five, that's how much. A piece of pie used to be a dime. Senior lady number four. Oh, she pauses and thinks for a moment. Senior lady number four says, I was never a dime. <laughs> a guy named Bob. Ten cents, sure was. Senior lady number four. But imagine how much a whole pie must cost. A guy named Bob. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Curtain. The cast. Driver herself, Rick himself, the seniors themselves, and a guy named Bob is played by a guy named Bob. Mm -hmm. <laughs>